Hello. Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's nice to have the opportunity to chat with you a little bit and let me add my voice of congratulations to Mary's on your acceptance to Roger Williams and uh, to the legal studies major. So I'm very happy to be joined today by Jennifer and Bennett, and we're here to answer whatever questions you might have. I have just a brief presentation. Some or all of you may have already attended the fall open house sessions. So if that's the case, I don't wanna be repetitive, but I will draw your attention to some of the highlights of our program. Um, I'm sure that you have applied elsewhere and been accepted elsewhere, and this is our opportunity to help you in the decision-making process as to whether you're going to become part of the Roger Williams family and part of the uh, legal studies department. Oh, let's see, slideshow. Okay. So you may or may not already be aware that the legal studies program is a double major program. And what that means is that you will come in and declare yourself as a legal studies student, but you will also select a major in the liberal arts as well. Um, and this is really open to your preferences, anything within the arts and sciences. Um, and that, you know, Jennifer and Bennett can talk to you a little bit about their second majors, but really anything that you're interested in that motivates you, uh, that inspires you, something that you may have enjoyed as a student in high school or in some other capacity. So you're thinking about things like psychology, political science, anthropology, sociology, languages would be wonderful, science, math, you name it. And I can answer some questions about that for you if you'd like. Um, so we believe that that makes our program uh, somewhat unique in that what we're offering is an interdisciplinary study of law at the undergraduate level. We're not trying to replicate what happens at the law school level. We're trying to provide our students with foundation for several things, for understanding the law, generally speaking, and how it operates in our society uh, as a discipline in and of itself, um, but also to prepare students who might be interested in going on to law school or graduate school or going directly into um, the job market right after graduation. And we have a number of students and alumni who do that. Another thing that I like to highlight for accepted students is the experiential learning part of our program and many of the classes that we offer in legal studies. In addition to emphasizing the knowledge that you're going to need um, to enter a career in the law or a law related career, um, we also focus on the skills that are necessary. So you'll be developing skills in legal research, and writing and all of your classes will incorporate a research and writing component. Um, we have projects, we have mock trials. We also have a couple of classes uh, like my colleague, Professor Martland's uh, domestic violence clinic that involve preparing students to actually go out into the community and put what they're learning in the classroom uh, into practical experience. I'll talk a bit about the three plus three program in a minute. That's our accelerated program that allows students to attend um, undergraduate legal studies in three years rather than four years. And then um, if they satisfy certain criteria, then to move immediately over to our law school. So more on that in a minute. But another highlight of our program that I wanted to mention is the practicum requirement. This means that we do require our students as part of our curriculum to get some type of practical hands-on experience out in the community. Whether that's a traditional internship, like working at a law agency or a law firm, or whether it's a community service activity, which is somewhat law related. Class size, you've probably already researched this, but class sizes, generally speaking at Roger Williams are on the small side and our major is on the small side. I believe we have about 130 legal studies majors now total. Um, I would say that our class sizes 
probably the largest class I've ever had is about 27, 28 students, but the norm is more around 20 or so. Student involvement, I'm going to save that for Jennifer and Bennett because they are very active on campus. Both of, both of them are, are considered to be leaders on campus, so they can talk to you more about student involvement. Uh, our program also provides extensive advising. You will have academic advising performed here by your faculty as opposed to something separate from the faculty in an advising center. So my colleagues and I, the other legal studies faculty, we work with our students very regularly, not only on how to select classes for the next semester, but also on um, issues surrounding just general campus life, uh, questions about careers, and I do quite a bit of pre-law advising um, for students who are interested in going on to law school. So we're proud of the program. It's been quite successful. I'm happy to always hear the good reports from our alumni about what they're doing. Very important work in either the legal profession or a related profession. Uh, we believe that our program makes our students very, very marketable to law school admissions committees, as well as graduate schools and uh, employers, for those of you who uh, don't plan to move directly into advanced study. So for this slide, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our curriculum options. This is the traditional four-year plan for a legal studies major. Uh, and this is what the vast majority of our students um, would be engaged in. So you can see that what we have up at the top of the degree plan here would be the courses that all students at Roger Williams, regardless of their major, this is what all students take. So you've got your core or general education classes over here. And then all students at the university are gonna complete two writing classes and a math requirement. The math requirement will really depend on what your major is. Most of our students take a um, just sort of general education math class. However, some of the majors like psychology would take a class in statistics. Your faculty advisor will help you with selecting those classes. And then here, I know the print is a little small, but here you'd see all of your legal studies courses that are required courses. So the introductory course that you'll be taking in the fall with me, most likely, is the American Legal System class, the overview class. And then you can see we have required courses in constitutional law, procedure, those two method courses, legal method courses you see there, those are your legal research and writing classes, which are so important, regardless of whether you, you're going to go directly into the workforce or you're going to go on to law school. We have a required course in ethics and professional responsibility. I'm sure you can understand why that's so important for anyone who wants to be engaged in a legal career. Then you have a little flexibility here to choose some other classes as electives and we have a number of those ranging from the trial advocacy class where you learn how to try a case from start to finish questioning witnesses opening statements introducing evidence the final exam in that class is a mock trial as opposed to a traditional exam I mentioned Professor Martland's domestic violence clinic. We've also offered courses on contract law, sports law, uh, intellectual property law. This fall, we're excited to be offering an elective in environmental justice. And the faculty for that is going to be one of the professors over at our law school, who's kind enough to come over and work with undergraduates. And that's her area of specialty is environmental law and uh, environmental justice. Now down here at the bottom of the degree plan, you see a lot of empty spaces and those we are going to fill as you move along through the curriculum and through your program with all of the classes that you're taking for your second major. So it might be philosophy, English literature, psychology, whatever your second major is. So I wanna 
contrast this now with the accelerated program or the three plus three program because a lot of incoming students and their parents tend to have questions about that during the um, presentation. So let's contrast the legal studies three plus three program now with what we just saw about the four year degree. So a lot of things remain the same. You will still focus on your university general education requirements. But the big difference here, because the students who are in the three plus three program are finishing up as an undergraduate in three years rather than in four years. The big difference here is that you will see that the number of legal studies, undergraduate legal studies requirements is greatly reduced. That means that you will have the time in the three years you're with us to complete those general education requirements and then all of the requirements for your second major. Everybody at Roger Williams as an undergraduate needs to have a 120 credits to graduate. That's the requirement for obtaining your bachelor's degree. So the way it works with the accelerated program is after your third year, you'll have 90 credits. And if you satisfy all of the other requirements, for example, you've maintained a 3.0 or above GPA all throughout your three years, you have no grade on your transcript lower than a C. And when you sit for the LSAT exam, you achieve a score at or above the median score for the previous year's entering class at our law school. Then you will take your 90 credits and go immediately over to our law school, Roger Williams Law. During that first year at the law school, once you successfully complete that first year, You've essentially done two things. It's kind of a double dipping situation. You have completed your first year of law school, but you have also earned 30 credits, which come back to me, to my department, and satisfy the remainder of those legal studies course requirements, at which point then you obtain your bachelor's degree. And I'll take questions on that at the end, if you have any. So I mentioned before um, our alumni and some of the things that they are doing, I wanted to talk to you about law school, graduate school and careers. So this is just a representative sample of some of the law schools that our students have gone on to attend, uh, as well as some of the graduate degrees that our students pursue. Uh, sometimes what happens is that our students will fall in love with their second major, which is great because the law really relates to any discipline that you can possibly think of. And so some of our students will go on to pursue graduate degrees. And you can see some of the examples here. Social work, psychology is a very popular one. The field of legal psychology is really growing and expanding and a lot of students have interest in that. As far as careers are concerned, there are the traditional careers that you would think of, attorneys, uh, as well as paralegals and legal assistants. But we also have people, as I said, going on to be community organizers, social workers, pol politicians. We've had a number of our alumni run for office, as well as work for people and with people running for office, education, corporate work, it's a very versatile degree, both the undergraduate legal studies degree, as well as the um, law degree, if you decide to go on to law school. So if I could, could I turn it over to you, um, Jen and Bennett, just to talk a little bit about your experiences and um, maybe some of the activities that you've been involved in on campus. Jen, do you want to go first? Sure. <laughs> Um, so as Professor Nusidi said before, um, I'm a senior. I double majored in legal studies and psychology and I minored in professional and public writing. Um, in terms of the other things that I'm involved in on campus, I'm part of uh, SciKai, which is the Psychology Honor Society, AlphaKai, which is an interdisciplinary honor society, 
Um, I'm a peer mentor, so I work with incoming uh, first year students over the summer and then throughout their first year um, to kind of help them with class registration, housing, um, and the general support and things like that. Um, I'm also very involved in the honors program. I'm an honors ambassador, so I do a lot of work with them at the Acceptance Students Day is kind of like I'm doing now. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I've done. And I guess other than that, I'm, I'm pretty involved in some research projects. I've been a TA for some of my site classes. Um, and I think, I think that's pretty much it. And then for classes that I've taken uh, with legal studies, uh, Professor Newsby mentioned the domestic violence clinic with Professor Martland. Um, I did that my junior year and that was a really great experience that if you guys have questions about, I can talk a little bit more about. Um, I took law and film with Professor Newsby, which I thought was a very unique and interesting class because it gives you the opportunity to look at the law through a lens that you see a lot portrayed in the media, but don't necessarily always have a chance to analyze. Um, so I learned a lot from that. And then the third elective that I did was psychology and law with Dr. Rusano. Um, so that was like Professor Newsy had just mentioned that legal psych is a really, a really up and coming big growing field. Um, so I kind of got a glimpse into that too. So happy to talk about more of any of that, but I'll let Bennett talk first. <laughs> Your turn, Bennett. Okay, so again, as was said, I'm, I'm Bennett. I'm a sophomore right now. I'll be a junior next year when you might be on campus with us. Um, I double majored in legal studies and political science and um, or I'm double majoring because I'm still there and um, I'm minoring in economics now. Um, on campus, I am uh, part of the mock trial team here. Um, I am an orientation advisor, so if you do choose to come to Roger Williams, then you'll see me during your orientation and stuff. I am, like Jen, an honors ambassador. So again, if you're in the honors program at all, if you're related to that in any way, you will see me through that as well. Um, aside from that, I also participate in the Musicians Guild, which is a group on campus that just meets up once a week to play music and have fun and socialize. Um, I haven't finished my electives for legal studies yet, like Jen has. Um, but next semester, I'm going to start working on them since I finished most of my required courses for the major. So I'm really excited to start my um, my course in psychology and the law, which, like Jen was talking about, psychology and the law is really a, a very interesting thing to be looking at and studying. Um, that's most of what I do on and around campus. Um, I do think it's it's very important to stay as involved as you can on campus because it really I've made some of my best friends here through my involvements, um, through Musicians Guild, through mock trial and stuff. And it really just makes everything a lot more fun while you're here and around. Great. So Jennifer has some good news about what's going to be happening in her life after she graduates this May, July, August, <laughs> or whenever we're able to celebrate her graduation. So Jen, would you mind talking about your future plans? Yeah, so I, um, it was funny, I had originally come to Roger with intent of doing the three plus three, um, because I think that's a fantastic program and I'm, I'm really happy that they offer it. Um, but just for personal circumstances, I decided it would be better for me to um, go to law school closer to home instead. I'm from Massachusetts, um, very close to Boston. So there's plenty of, plenty of schools in that area. And it just made more sense for me to do that. Um, so I ended up applying to Northeastern University School of Law back in, oh my gosh, that was in November now. Um, and I found out a few months ago that I got accepted with a full tuition scholarship. So I will be headed there in the fall, given that classes are in person in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you really rolled the dice, didn't you only apply to Northeastern? Yes, Northeastern was the only school I applied to because I, I was torn between going right away and working. Um, there were a few jobs that I was looking at in a few places I had applied. Um, I was looking at jobs in some of the courthouses that are near my town. Um, so working in the clerk's office as a case specialist and doing some work for them. Um, and I had also looked at uh, working as a victim witness advocate, which the reason why I wanted to do that had a lot to do with um, Professor Martland's class and having that experience. Class. But then 
rolled the dice with law school and that turned out pretty okay. So that's the pretty that's okay. The <laughs> Full scholarship all three years, I'd say so. Yeah, not going <laughs> to complain about that. No, but that's because of all of your hard work. That's great. So I think we are set to have questions. So it looks like there are no questions in the chat feature, but it looks like we have Vanessa here and Aliyah. If you want to unmute yourself and ask a question, go right ahead. Um, for Jen, what made you decide to choose psychology as your other major? Yeah, so I, I didn't have another major declared going in. Um, at orientation, they, when, when you pick your classes at orientation and, and do the advising and everything, I, um, I was talking to the advisor there and I said, you know what, I think I want to take an intro to psych class. That's something I've kind of been interested in. I'm interested in um, a lot of mental health awareness, kind of how the brain works, things like that. Um, so I signed up for intro to psych, just total last minute spur of the moment decision at orientation. <laughs> Um, and I ended up taking the class and I really loved it. Um, so after that, I signed up for a few electives in the spring, um, because you don't have to declare your second major for a while. I don't think I formally declared it until sophomore year. Um, but I wanted to try a few more classes just to see how it was. And I, I absolutely love the psych faculty. I love our legal studies faculty and our psych faculty so much. Um, but I had a really good experience with those classes and with the professors that I met. So I made that one my second. Um, I contemplated political science like Bennett is doing, but I took one poli sci class that's a requirement for legal studies. It was American government. Um, and I liked the class a lot, but it just wasn't for me. I felt like I clicked with psych a lot better. So. And then um, did you have to take a statistics or did you take the statistics class for psych? And do you know if we took AP statistics this year and test out if that's an option? Yeah, so I, that's a grudge that I still hold because my high school told me not to take statistics because they told me I would need calc and then I got to college and they told me I needed statistics and not calc. <laughs> um, psych does have uh, basic stats is their math requirement um, and I believe if you get AP credit, I'm not sure if it's a four, a five, or both, um, but I believe you can be exempt if you get AP credit. Okay, thank you. You can also email admissions. You can email me and I can look up the score for um, AP stats and I'll let you know uh, whether you can receive credit for it or not. Perfect, thank you. I think that was it for my questions. Thank you. About class. So I was wondering for English. So I was wondering how that would work with English credit. What what credit? I'm sorry. Did you say English? Yes. So did you take AP English? Is that what you're telling me? No, it's an ECE. Oh, it's an ECE. Again, you know what? Just email me. Um, just give me the. Um, where you're taking it and like 101 English or whatever the prefix to, and I can look it up for you. Um, I'm mbubar at rwu.edu, and I will look it up and I'll email you back and let you know whether you receive credit for it. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? I don't, well, I, I had a question like about the workload if you choose to do the three plus three, it's not really like more work. It's like work at a different time. Like you said, the courses are moved around. So the first three years are more of the required. Is that right? <laughs> that's right. So that's the reason um, that we greatly reduce the number of legal studies classes that you would need to take as an undergraduate. So the typical course load is five classes a semester. And that, that doesn't change because you're a double major and it also really rarely changes because you're doing three plus three. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you choose, speaking from psych, because I know you had asked about that, if you choose psych as your second major, I can assure you that it's absolutely doable fitting all of the classes in three years. 
Okay, thank you. So, yeah, I, I actually had, I didn't end up doing the three plus three, but I would have been able to, and I ended up, if you're, if you're comfortable with it and you're comfortable with like taking six classes in a semester, I recommend it if you can. If not, it's totally fine. Um, but I did that a few semesters when I had some easier classes to take and I ended up being able to add my minor because of it, because I freed up some time. Oh. You did a minor in writing, is that right? Yeah. Highly recommend a writing minor, by the way, because you're halfway there just with the legal studies requirements anyway. Yes. Did you, uh, I apologize in advance if I'm confused here. Did you do the, some work with the scholars at risk? I, yeah, I was in the middle of that when the pandemic hit. So oh. I was supposed to be going to a conference for it, but it got canceled. Yeah, that was an interesting project. Yeah, I was very excited about it, but unfortunately it got cut short. You'll have more to come. Hope so. <laughs> Exciting projects to come. Hope so. Any other questions for us? I'm not set. It looks like that's it. <laughs> I can wrap it up. Is everyone okay if we wrap it up? Yep. I just wanted to mention, feel free to jot down the contact information here on this slide. That's my email address and my colleague, Professor Martland, that's her email address. So if you think of any other questions for us, um, happy to answer them via email. And I just want to reiterate again, if you have any questions about admissions, feel free to reach out. Uh, we'd be happy to talk to you, email, FaceTime, whatever needs to happen. So I want to thank everyone for attending today. Thank Professor New City and congratulations, Jen. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. And we'll see you in the fall, Bennett. Thanks for coming. Thanks, thank everybody. All right. Thank have you. a good night. You too. Bye. Thank you.